Hey everybody, I am Mike, in case you were wondering, at Filmboy24. Today, yeah, we're back at it again. We're going to try to get an image and some audio out of this very, very old roll of Ektachrome 160 Type A sound film that was exposed many, many years ago. So we're back at it again. If you're new to my channel, occasionally I will take an old roll of some sort of Super 8 film, or maybe 8 or 16, but really it's only been Super 8 because they're more readily available, uh, that was shot previously by someone I don't know or have no idea where really it came from. In this particular case, this roll of film, it's the smooth film, and it's got the blue background rectangle with white writing, which means this is one of the earliest Ektachrome E160 carts. And it came in this box, and it expired or processed by November of 1978. So my guesstimate, and I'll read the, uh, the edge markings on the film once it's processed. As you can see, it has yet to be processed, or maybe you can't see. Uh, but I'll read and find out exactly when this film was manufactured, just to make sure it was actually in the right box when I got it. So I get these cartridges from various sources, online or at flea markets or garage sales. This particular one came from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Uh, I got it in a lot of film a few months ago online. Uh, some of it was new, some of it was already exposed. And this one was completely exposed. So what we're going to do today is I have my Lomo UPB-1A right here. If you're not familiar with these tanks, I did a video on exactly how I load these tanks. Check it out if you want. Uh, I made this little foam. It's an opaque black foam sort of cover. Probably overkill, I'm sure, but just to make sure, I'll pour my chemicals in and then I'll quickly cover it again. And the, as you can see, the little, you probably like that view, don't you? <laughs> just to cover, uh, make sure no light gets in. Uh, these tanks come with two separate compartments here for two up to 50 foot rolls of Super 8 or 16 millimeter slash regular 8 in its 16 millimeter format. Uh, film up to 50 feet each. I'm only going to use one today, so I'll take the center reel out. And I'm going to take it in there in just a second into the bathroom that I have converted into a temporary dark room. And I'm going to load this roll of film onto this tank. But before I do, I want to tell you a couple things really quick. I've been working on a couple of things. Last night, I soldered up three brand new, fresh Aeroflex 16S battery packs. Don't have them finished yet, but I have all of the batteries soldered together and taped up. I'll show you a quick picture. I also just picked up from Harbor Freight. Check them out. Uh, a padded, foam padded case for my 1014 XLS cameras, my Canon Super 8 cameras. Uh, they're very comparable. I've owned Pelican cases in the past. They're very comparable. I have nothing to do with Harbor Freight, by the way. I just one down the street from me. And I found these cases, uh, and they're, they're a, a half to a third of the price, and they fit my cameras the, perfectly. I think this is the 4800 series. I have three. But I'm getting ready to sell one, I think. But I have three Canon 1014 XLSs, but I want to keep two for my feature film. Here they are in their new home. I did a little slots on each side for three rolls each, or six total, of Super 8 film as well. And in the center, I'm going to make some cutouts for batteries and a couple little accessories. Lastly, before I go load this film, I want to say thank you. I am just over a year on YouTube. I have over 950 beautiful subscribers. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you so, so much. All of you wonderful people for subscribing, for liking, and for commenting on my videos. It's the only reason that I still have the energy to continue to do this. It is so much more work than you think. Uh, these 8 to 12 minute videos take me 2, 3, 4 days sometimes to complete. So thank you so much, and if you haven't already, and c consider subscribing. I really do appreciate every one of you, especially you OGs. You know who you are. All of you that have been with me since the beginning or way early on, you guys, I, I can't thank you enough. 
That's enough about that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna take this in there and I'm going to load it up. I'll be right back. Ah. And we are loaded. <laughs> yeah, I just loaded, it took only a couple of minutes. Uh, didn't really have any hiccups, but this film to me is a lot easier to get off the cart and onto my little 50 foot reel than the sound ones are a little easier because you can take it right from the bottom and you don't have to take it through the gate area. So it makes life a little bit easier. Um, one thing I want to mention, I am going to process this as a black and white negative. Now, if you didn't see uh, a video or two ago, I processed some of this stuff in E6 chemicals, really hot E6 chemicals. I'm not going to take a chance on some of this older uh, found film, simply because this is really old found film from the 70s. The emulsion likes to melt off of this older stuff. Now, the, the one that I processed in E6 uh, a week or two ago, that was a newer stock. I believe it was like 1989 or something like that. Uh, so it, it held up a lot better. Actually, I think it was more like 90 in the 90s, early 90s. Any rate, this will be black and white negative. That's my go-to when it comes to this, especially this older, older uh, E160 stock. It will be HC110B formula at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or somewhere close to that, sometimes 67, uh, for about seven minutes. And I will rinse and wash and all of that. And then I'll also fix it for about seven minutes as well at roughly the same temperature. I use my typical Remjet remover formula. 90% of the time, most of the Remjet comes off during that first bath. I use four tablespoons of washing soda or sodium bicarbonate, as it's known in many scientific circles, not mine, uh, and one tablespoon of baking soda, which is known as sodium carbonate in other people's circles. I mix that with about one liter of warm water, not hot, and then I mix you want to mix it as you're pouring the powder into the water. If you don't, it's going to clump and it's going to take about an hour for it to dissolve. If you mix while you're pouring the chemical, I don't know if you can do that, but then it dissolves pretty much instantly. And then you got to let it cool down a little bit. Like I say, I start at around 80, 85 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, but you want that to cool down to about room temperature. This is very fragile. This emulsion is extremely fragile. So no hot temps on this really old stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna take this tank that is now fully loaded. I can't open it and show you for obvious reasons, but I always take the lid on, as you can see, just in case. This is, uh, I have two of these tanks, and this one, the lid's really loose. The other one, it's hard to even get the lid off of, so I really have to make sure it doesn't come off. And I have my seal on here. I'm gonna take it in there, I'm gonna process it and see what we get. It's gonna take me, I won't be back for three, four hours, uh, for you, it'll be instantaneous. But in the meantime, I'm going to throw up a little montage. I do every one of these videos. If you don't want to watch it, just skip through it. It's my process for Super 8 film. I now use PhotoFlow at the end and not dish soap. I used to use that sometimes. Anyway, here's the montage. And when you see me again, we will know, yay or nay, do we have images and sound right now. And we are processed fully. Uh, it's been, I started shooting this video around 9.30 in the morning. It is now a little after 1.30 in the afternoon. So it's been a little while for me, but instantaneous for you. I have a piping hot, brand new, fresh cup of coffee. And we have images. We have pretty darn good sound. 
Don't get overly excited. It's the kind of film that you expect to get when you find old found film. I'm really glad that we didn't process this in my 100 degree E6 chemicals and try to get color out of it because using my 68 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, I still got a tiny little bit of issue with the emulsion. Nothing like I've gotten in the past, but I feel like had we used E6, we would have just burned the emulsion completely off because this is some of the original, the old school original E160 film. I could not find an edge code, so I'm not sure when this film was manufactured. I'm going to go with somewhere around the very mid 70s, probably 76, because it has a, a process by date of 78. That's my guess. So with that, I'm going to also just assume, we all know what that does, uh, that it was shot sometime in the mid 70s as well. Uh, there is a vertical line about two-thirds of the way in the film and that is clearly seen in my emulsion don't know how it got there uh, i don't think it's anything that i did because it would be well i would think in the entire film but i can i could see it when i was taking it off of the drop my little drying rack but I, you could physically see the line there's also you you might see some of the bubbling of the emulsion it's very fine it's almost like grain but with my loop and up in the light, I could clearly see tiny, 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 tiny bubbling. The alien skin bubble thing that we talked about a few months ago. The sound, or audio, is pretty darn good, actually. Um, there is some brrrr here and there, but it's not throughout the entire... I'll do it again. Brrr. Uh, I, I think it might have been from the original film shooter's camera, if I'm, if I'm, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I don't think it's from my, my Elmo sound editor, because again, I feel like it would be throughout, and it's sporadic. It's only like two or three times. With that, the film is not perfect. Uh, it's pretty grainy. Uh, it's, some of it's a little out of focus, but without a whole lot more of this, and I, eh. but... I did my best at syncing up the sound. It's not always perfect, but I did my best. I think it's pretty good. Take a look at it. Yeah, let's go. Move it. Move it. Faster. Faster. That's not the way you were smoking, all right? Now, that's not a bad stroke. That's not racing.
Head back. Joey, get your head back. Come on, get it back. So, so, there it is. Uh, clearly, it's a, I'm going to go out on a limb and say a father trying to teach his son, little Joey, uh, how to swim. Hopefully, based on his specific instructions, hopefully little Joey became an Olympic swimmer. Uh, at any rate, if you know dad or little Joey or the voice of mom or somebody or recognize anything in that film whatsoever, leave me a comment and let me know because uh, it's probably something that Joey might like to see now or maybe his dad if he's still around. Like I say, that's probably 45 years ago, somewhere in that range. So I don't know who's still around. Little Joey's probably my age, maybe a little younger. If you enjoy videos like this and I got a lot more of them coming, do me a favor and just tap the like button for me or flick it. Either one. I'm happy with either, as long as it turns blue. How about subscribe? Become part of this wonderful Analog Filmboy24 family. I'd love to have you. I appreciate each and every one of you subscribers. I said it earlier, but I can't say it enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And to each and every single one of you that watches my videos, if you're still watching right now, you're, you're loyal. And I love you. In a, in a platonic way, but I love you. And until the very next time that I see you, you. There it is, the head bob. I'll see each and every one of you on the very next go around.